Lessons and takeaways from my interview with Gavin Smith. Hey everyone, you're listening to an Entrepreneur's Rising episode. And in this particular episode, it is where I share some of my personal takeaways or insights that I thought really stood out to me from a a conversation that I've had with a guest. And uh, this week's guest was Gavin Smith. And I really, really enjoyed our conversation. Um, You know, we kind of nerded out on numbers a bit. Um, And I know not every entrepreneur finds numbers fun to talk about, easy to talk about, or even to listen to. So if you have listened to that whole episode Uh, hats off to you. I fully encourage it that you listen to the full episode. I think it's quite an interesting conversation. But if you find numbers send you into a a tiz and you start listening to it and you found it too challenging, then this is the episode to summarize some key takeaways that I think you can take and implement. This is in no means a complete summary of that episode. This is just some of the things that stood out to me. Uh, there was a lot more in that episode than what I'm going to share with you today. But I, I like to do these little summary episodes as a way of giving you some insights and some focuses to action, if you like. And so one of the things that I really liked um, that Gavin shared was, and he, this was right at the beginning of the podcast too, he said, knowing your numbers is retrospective using your numbers is about knowing what's going to happen to shape your decision. So the reason that landed a lot for me is I traditionally have seen myself as someone who's really good at finance and good at my numbers. But if I think about it, the majority of how I manage numbers is I know my numbers. So I know the retrospective, like I know my P&L, I know my balance sheet, I know my cash flow positions from the past. I'm not traditionally that great at always using my numbers to know what's going to happen next. Now I do on an unconscious level, but not necessarily set up systems forecasting in the way that that he recommends it. So the first thing I would say there is if you're not looking at your numbers at all, start with at least being a retrospective entrepreneur and start getting regular reports from your bookkeeper or an accountant. Like you, if you're not, you don't need to go in there and do the numbers yourself and use zero and all that. But if you aren't at least monthly getting a a profit and loss report that is up to date, everything's been reconciled, it's accurate um, in your inbox or in your Slack or whatever you have, then at the bare minimum, every month you should be getting a retroactive, here's how you did P&L, here's how you're doing balance sheet, here's how you did cash flow statement. So profit and loss, balance sheet, cash flow statement. They're the three things at minimum I personally want and get in my Slack channel from my bookkeeper every single month. So start there, go retrospective. But there's real power and something that I, I'm now looking at and formalizing in going, okay, well, using our numbers is about also looking at those past four months, creating a baseline and being able to forecast from there. And uh, I won't go into that if you want to learn more about all of what I just said there. Listen to the full episode, but just start by getting at least a monthly cash flow statement, balance sheet and profit and loss. So you can at least be looking at knowing your numbers and then start from there to work on using your numbers to make better decisions. The second thing that I really, I liked about what Gavin shared was the idea of simplifying your profit and loss into five key categories. Uh, Those key categories were income, team, marketing, property, and overheads. So income is obviously gonna be at the top, and then the other four are costs. So he's kind of just saying lump all your income together into an income number and then have Uh, simplify it down to here's what your team costs were, here's what your marketing costs were, here's what your property costs were. So property costs would be your rent or or interest on mortgage if you you own the premises. Um, What are the costs that relate to the property that you work from? Um, If you work from home and there's no rent or anything being paid, then they might be zero. And then your overheads is just everything else that kind of doesn't fit into team and and, uh, marketing. What I like about that is traditionally when you look at a profit and loss, there's a lot of what's known as line items and you can look at it and feel overwhelmed. And this is not about never looking deeper, but it's allowing you just very simply to go, okay, here's what our income was, here's what we spent on team, here's what we spent on marketing, here's what our overheads were. And then the third kind of takeaway I took from that is also 
a reminder from what Terry Tran was saying uh, on our recent interview as well, where looking at percentages is more powerful than looking at dollars. So when you take these four cost areas, team, marketing, property, and overheads, look at the dollar sign, but also make sure that you've got the percentage of income that they represent because the power in looking at the percentage is going to be far better. It can be very easy. One of the things Gavin was saying, and I agree, it can be very easy to go, oh, I need to get my overheads down. We're spending too much or my team costs are too high or am I, you know, I'm spending so much on marketing. But then when you see the percentage of income going to that particular cost, you might all of a sudden realize that actually, you know, percentage wise, it's quite healthy or it's not that bad. And so instead of focusing on getting your cost down, you might go, okay, actually, we just need to grow income or, or something like that. So really powerful, simplify it down into those categories and then look at the percentage of income as opposed to staring at the dollar signs. One of the things you also talked about then with using numbers was doing a cash flow forecast weekly and not monthly. So a cash flow forecast is different to a cash flow statement. A cash flow statement is where you're looking at, well, how much cash came in and how much cash went out. So we're looking, as we were saying at the beginning, the retrospective of what happened. Whereas a cash flow forecast is about going, here's what we think is going to happen. And doing that weekly will better help you understand the highs and lows of your different cycle. Because one of the things Gavin pointed out is, well, in a, in a space of a month, you might pay certain suppliers or freelancers or staff at different points and that might be different to when the income comes in you know if, if you're smart and i highly encourage you to have a business model where you typically get paid before you pay out for the delivery of that service you know i encourage you to really look at if you're an agency or whatever like how can you go well you pay me up front and then i deliver the service um that's usually going to be a better cash flow position for your business but then when you're looking at the forecast, you don't want to just go, well, here's what I think it's going to be at the end of the month. You want to see how the highs and lows are going to happen in the week because it can be very easy to go and look at your bank account middle of the month and go, look at all this cash I got. Oh, I'm going to go buy a property or I'm going to pull some cash out for my personal thing. I'm going to buy a car when actually you didn't realize that in two weeks time, your BAS was due if you're Australian. Um, so BAS is a business activity statement. It's like a tax thing that we have to do every quarter. So you, all of a sudden you've got this tax due and you've spent money that you actually need and then you're scrambling later. Whereas the, this weekly cash flow forecast will help you write it out. If you if you go get excited by the amount of money in the bank, you can look at your cash flow forecast and go, ah, oh, actually I need that money. Or you might look at it and go, actually, yeah, I can use it to do those things. And that's where the power of the decision comes in. You at least now have accurate information to make a better decision. So those were kind of my big takeaways around a lot of the finance conversation. We then had a little pivot towards the end of the episode where we talked a little bit more about how he has partners in his business. He has multiple businesses. And so I asked him about you know, how does he make that work? And the big takeaway here was he has partners where he brings to the table his experience his experience as being a CFO and the financial side of it and the financial management, which is such a powerful skill set to bring to the table because, frankly, a lot of entrepreneurs, it's not their skill set. Um, so he brings those skill sets and he partners with others who kind of fill those gaps. They've got a vision. So he talked about how he has some bars that he owns with some friends. And so the friends are more, the, they've got the vision and the hospitality experience and he's managing the finance side of it. And it's a really nice uh, marriage, if you like, of business partnership. And I think it's a really important reminder that when we move from, from being an operator in our business and we get into that ownership stage, especially if, like me, you start looking at getting involved in other businesses outside of your main business, you know you want to sit more in that investor level. You don't want to be getting your hands too dirty in the in the day-to-day. -day. It's about really finding those business partners that will fill the gaps. Like, really know what are the skills you have. For me, I know the skills I have are in product development, processes, systems, uh, business models that are uh, subscription-based. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of, you know, and a lot of technology experience. So there's a whole bunch of like this tech side. I, I can be a strong CTO in someone's business and also have the better understanding of the overall business model and, and how that works. 
that's what I can bring to the table to someone else who might have the vision, they might have the strong sales component, the strong, strong marketing side, and they're just like, but I, I suck at delivery. I'm really good at selling things, but I need help on the actual delivery and scale of our delivery side. And that's the kind of perfect marriage for me when it comes to finding business partners, the people who are the stronger on the front end sell, and I'm really strong on making sure that the back end delivery is, is strong, but also doesn't involve my day to day either. It's really powerful to understand your strength, what are the gaps so you can find those business partners to partner with as you start to do your investment journey and invest and partner with other people to have multiple businesses. So I just want to leave it there. There's a whole bunch more in that episode. I encourage you to go back, listen to the full episode with Gavin Smith. Really great, powerful episode. Uh, if you'd like to save some time and just read the transcript of that episode, you can do that over at rising.show if you, you read faster than you listen. Uh, otherwise, if you're listening to this and you want to just listen to it, go and check it out. Again, rising.show, you'll find that episode and all other episodes, as well as obviously on your own favorite listening device, whether that be podcast app on your iPhone or Spotify or whatever it is you listen. If you enjoy this show, please share it with your friends. Uh, leave us a review and rating. And uh, if there's anything you want to hear more of or less of, uh, send me an email. You can do that from rising.show as well. Until next time, keep up the journey. You've been listening to Entrepreneurs Rising. Thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. I appreciate your time and look forward to connecting in future episodes. If you would like show notes or any resources from today's episode, you can find them at rising.show. Rising.show, you can find show notes for this episode and all other episodes, as well as links to socials and the ability to reach out and connect with me, make your suggestions for future episodes. Until next time, keep up the journey.